If you've picked up Logic Pro for iPad and want to record a software instrument, record your voice or an acoustic instrument, or create a rhythm section for a beat but don't know where to start, this video is for you. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how to use Logic Pro's different track types inside a tracks project. From Logic Pro's homepage, simply tap on the tracks button at the top. A new project will open and you'll be prompted to select a track type to use. If you just want to load up Logic Pro's default software instrument and get playing, you can just tap on the MIDI option and a new track will be created. You can tap the More button here, however, if you'd like to load up a specific instrument patch or third-party instrument plugin. You'll be playing your selected software instrument using one of Logic Pro's five play surfaces. Depending on what instrument you have selected, Logic will select what's probably the best play surface automatically. You can manually select which play surface you want by tapping here and selecting from the five different options. To check which instrument plugin is being used and change presets for that instrument, tap the plugins dial in the view control bar here. The default MIDI patch, Deluxe Classic, uses the electric piano instrument plugin. You can double tap the plugin tile to open the electric piano instrument plugins controls and edit its sound. Or if you open the browser window by tapping here and head to the plugin presets menu, you can select from the available presets for this instrument plugin here. If you want to select a completely different instrument patch, head back to the browser and tap to open the Instrument Patches menu. You can use Logic Pro's Patches filter to narrow down your search to a specific instrument, genre or vibe. You can audition different patches by tapping the play icon next to it And if you want to use a patch on an existing MIDI track, tap, hold and drag it over an existing track's playhead. Alternatively, you can tap the replace button in the bottom left of the browser window and simply tap on a patch to have it replace the one currently loaded onto your track instantly. A note on clutter here, you should start getting into the habit of closing windows that you're not currently using anyway, but if you want to instantly close all currently open windows, just double tap the view control bar at the bottom. Double tap it again to reopen the last windows used. If you've found the sound you like and want to record it, make sure your selected play surface is open. Move the playhead to the position where you want the recording to start and hit record. Alternatively, you may want to record multiple takes of you playing your software instrument. You do this using the cycle area. Use the cycle area by tapping here, then dragging and dropping to resize. With MIDI, recording with the cycle area is set to merge by default, meaning when the playhead hits the end of the cycle area and skips back to the start, it will keep recording, merging together your previous performance and your current one. If you'd rather have Logic create a takes folder where each time the playhead skips back to the start of your cycle area, a new separate recording will start, Head to the Options menu in the top right of Logic's screen, tap on Settings, then tap on the Recording tab. Here, make sure the Cycle On option is set to Create Take Folder.
If you plan to record yourself singing or playing an acoustic instrument using your iPad's built-in microphones, getting set up is really straightforward. If this isn't the first track in a new project, tap the Add Tracks button above the track headers. If you want to load a default audio track, just tap on the Audio Track option. Tap the More button mentioned earlier if you want to customise your audio tracks settings. From there, it's as easy as hitting record. Input monitoring is disabled when your iPad is set as both the input and output, so you only really need to worry about making sure your recording levels are set correctly and that you're at appropriate distance from your device. Using an audio interface with your iPad and Logic Pro is a little bit more involved, though by no means difficult. Full instructions on how you can use an audio interface to record in Logic Pro can be found in this video here. I'll also put a link to that down below the like button. Once you've recorded your audio, you can change how it sounds by opening the browser, heading to audio patches, and selecting a patch that sounds good to you. Logic Pro's drummers are a great way to add authentic sounding rhythm tracks to your projects. If this isn't the first track in your project, hit that plus icon above the track headers to open the new track menu. As with the previous tracks, you can just tap on the drummer option to open a drummer track with the default settings in place. Also like the other tracks, you can tap the more button to customize. When creating a new drummer track, an 8-bar region will be created for you. In the Drummer Editor window, you can select from 33 different drummer styles over three different types – acoustic, electric, or percussion. You can use the controls to fine-tune your drummer's performance, adjusting things like intensity, what parts of the kit they play, whether to have them follow another track in your project's rhythm, and more. Each drummer also has several presets that you can choose from, which act as a good starting point to work from. If you like the beat your drummer is playing, but want to adjust the kit sounds, open the browser and head to Instrument Patches. Again, you can audition each patch by tapping the play icon next to it. Or tap the replace button and instantly change the kit sound of your selected track. If you want to increase the length of your drummer region, just tap on the region to select it, then tap and hold to drag it to the desired length using the Wii handles that appear on the edge. If you want to increase the length of your drummer region, but want the pattern played in the first 8 bars to repeat, tap the loop button below the control bar, then drag the edge of the drummer region to the desired position.
you know how to open a new track by now and again you can just tap the pattern track option to open with default settings applied or dive into the more menu to set up your track manually. Assuming you've went for the default option, the pattern track will open with the step sequencer loaded up. In the step sequencer editor window, you can add your own rhythm based drum patterns and note based instrument patterns using software instruments. You can create patterns by turning steps on and off by tapping them. You can preview your pattern by tapping the small speaker icon in the top left of the edit window. And you can affect your individual steps with the buttons at the top of the window. You can adjust velocity, gait, tie, note, and octave settings for each step. If you'd rather dive into some pre-made patterns, open the browser, head to Patterns, then Drums and select a pattern. Step sequencer patterns will create a track stack consisting of every individual piece of the kit used. In the patterns track header, tap the arrow next to the track icon and you'll be able to access each individual part of the kit. You can adjust their volumes or if you open the plugin window with an individual drum track selected, add effects to that specific track. That's how to get started working with tracks in Logic Pro for iPad. I'd love to know what you're struggling with in Logic Pro for iPad and what you'd like to see me make a video on next. So step one, give that like button a good stiff kick in and then leave a comment down below and let me know what you want to see on this channel next. If you want to find out more about Logic Pro for iPad's play surfaces, including some secret functions that Apple have hidden away in there, Watch this next.